Welcome back to my video series on building a beginner tube amplifier. Unfortunately, I realized that I ran out of these solder type terminal straps and I would like to get use these larger size ones because I'm going to be mounting them with these larger bolts. So I've got some on order, probably about to be about a week before they get here. And so I went ahead and moved on with some other parts of the build. Mainly we're installing the speaker jacks here. Again, I am going with these really are oversized for this size of amplifier speaker jacks. But I like these because they have a really large hole and all of my speaker setups that I'd be swapping this amp into use fairly large size wire that has a hard time fitting into these these type of smaller connectors. Plus I like that these direct solder onto the these direct solder onto the jacks rather than soldering into the let me zoom in here. These just have a little lug that they solder onto that bolts on. Where this type direct solders to the lug itself. So there's no mechanical connection that can get corroded or come loose and end up causing problems. So I'm going to show you how I solder these in and what you need to be careful of. If you're using the type with a lug, it's not as critical because you basically just solder the wire onto the lug after you take it off. You just take that off, solder it onto that little lug, and then bolt the whole thing together so it's not super complicated. On these direct solder type, you do have to be a little more careful. First, you want to totally disassemble the whole thing and then and let me zoom in again if you look the nut has a little step on it and that step needs to go this direction so make sure that you put it in that way so before you get started, you put you put the nut on, and then two washers on the inside. Then we want to run the wire through like that. Then the next step is we measure off. We set this on one inch and then use this end to measure about an inch of wire outside of the and cut it off. Okay, I'm going to zoom back out. Okay, one of the things I want to show you too when I'm soldering is I love this little um, soldering cleaning tool I use and just about every time before I go to solder a joint you just dab the soldering iron into there and it cleans off um, cleans the tip off and gets it ready to solder so one of these is really handy this is a uh, Heiko I've had this thing for years and this is gold uh, stuff inside here last, seems to last forever. So this is a handy thing to have if you're going to be do, when you're doing your soldering work. Also something that's handy to have for doing this kind of work is a little tin of rosin soldering flux. And I'll show you why in just a moment. When you're getting ready to solder something large like this, it's good to have a soldering iron that you can turn the heat up and down and you want to turn it up high for this. You got to heat this whole large thing up to get the solder to melt to it. The other thing you want to do is a lot of times things like this or these RCA jacks that I use, 
they have a plating on them. And you want to take a Dremel tool and grind the plating down, grind the plating off where you're going to solder. And for like on this one, I would probably use a tip like this so I could get down in these grooves. But you want to get down to the brass. This plating solder will not stick to this plating. So, same thing on this. I come in with this Dremel tool and grind down until I get to the solid brass. Even though this looks like brass, this is some sort of a plating. And the solder solders to this a lot easier if you get some fresh brass to it. And then I get my soldering flux and dip it in there to get some flux down in that little pocket. So when you get ready to solder this together, the other thing you want to do is go ahead and put the, the two plastic pieces on the outside of this and have this ready to solder. So next, and people laugh at me doing this, but I just use a really dull old steak knife for stripping the insulation off wires because I found that it cuts through the plastic but it doesn't cut through the, the stranded wire underneath and you may have some great wire strippers but that's that's just how I do it so like I said you want to get the soldering iron and I'm not going to actually solder this on camera, but because of all the smoke from the flux, the you want to tin this, then you want to hold, put put this down on something, and then hold the soldering, hold the soldering iron like this, and heat this up enough so that the solder will actually melt when you're touching the terminal not just the iron. You might have to touch the solder to the tip a little bit to kind of get it melted to get a puddle started, but then make sure that you're able to melt the solder onto this metal piece so that the solder is really making a strong, good connection to it. And then while this is still warm, grab a hold of it with some pliers or something like this and hold it up there and put the solder Put, put the soldering iron down like this so the puddle remelts and then let go of it and try to hold it as still as you can. And then this will be attached and then you can slide this together with the wire, screw the, nut, screw the nuts on the back and get it attached to the amplifier. Okay, the, the next thing I worked on was the volume control stuff and here is my finished soldered up volume control things. Okay, let me go how let me go over how these wires are connected. The one on this end is the ground, which is the outer copper weaving or shield on both of these. The center pin goes to the grid of the driver section of the tube or the triode section. And then the, this, this pin here goes to the positive or the center of your RCA jack. And both these grounds are connected together. These wires right here, realistically, are short enough where you could just do these with a pair of 22 gauge stranded wire. Didn't really need to do shielded cable here. But I already had the cable going, so I just finished it up on both sides of the volume pot with shielded cable. Now, if you wanted to move these to another location in the amp further, further away, then you would absolutely need to use shielded cable. So when we're looking at this, you can see that the there's a pretty long shielded cable on this side that's going over to the tubes. And so definitely need to use shielded cable because you're going not real close, but you're going within a couple of inches of the heater wires 
which is AC, and we do not want to get hum in introduced into the signal path. So, again, I used these direct solder type RCA jacks. They'll be sitting in the amp like that on top of each other. And so, all I got to do now is bolt those in place. Just in case you do use a different volume control than this one, and even if you're using this kind, you want to make sure that when the volume control is turned all the way down, that when you measure the resistance between this center pin and the terminal that you're choosing to be the ground, that it's very close, if not at zero ohms. And that the 100K is between this pin and the one that is going to the hot of the RCA jack. And that when you turn it all the way up, that the pin, the center pin, or the one that's going to the grid is now 100K between ground and the, and the grid pin and that the hot lead of the RCA jack is close to zero ohms. So you're basically getting a direct connection from the hot of the RCA to the grid. And that'll make sure that the volume control is working in the right direction. You don't want to assemble this thing and have the volume control work backwards. So the last couple of things I want to go over, I've thought given some thought to how the rest of the components are going to be installed in the amplifier and we only have a few really big components left to figure out a place for and they are the electrical electrolytic capacitors that are part of the power supply there are two 47 UF 350 volt capacitors that are going to be powering the plate of the triode section of the tube and I'm going to set this little area up here, and this going to have mount these two right here with the two resistors, and then bring the plate voltage over to this strip, which will then jump over to these tag strips to power up the plates of the triodes. The other two big capacitors that I have to install or the ones in the main power supply. There's a 33 UF, which I'm going to put in this orientation over here with the tag strip going across here. And then this big 220 UF 350 volt capacitor is going to be mounted right there. So as you can see, it's a tight fit, but I think there's room for all this stuff to be in here. The last thing, and I had to order these parts too, was for this LED in this power switch to be illuminated well, we need to have 12 volt DC going to the LED. Now there's, I've seen people talk about using uh, just a resistor or maybe a diode and a resistor off the 6.3 volt to power up uh, an LED like this but you end up with it flickering and I don't know about you but my peripheral vision picks up flick flickering AC really bad and it drives me crazy so what I'm gonna do over in this little section, this little corner right here, the amp, right above where the 6.3 volt tag strip is, I've got a small bridge rectifier that I'm going to connect to the AC. Then on the DC side of it, I'm going to put a small electrolytic capacitor to smooth out the DC and then hook these two power leads for the LED up to that. These, this switch I'm using already has the dropping resistor built into the switch because it was designed mostly for automotive use. And so they went ahead and put the resistor inside the switch so you don't have to bother with that. Again, 
this is your first build and you're trying to keep this simple, it would be a lot easier to put just a on-off single pole, single throw toggle switch on the side here. I would use a standard size one, not a miniature one, and mount it right here where you would just be running a wire from here to the switch and then hook the transformer lead straight to that, straight to the switch too and then hook the other transformer primary to here and that would simplify this mess of wiring I got over here but you know I want this cool push button lit up switch on mine so that's it for this episode I do wanted to remind you while you're soldering up the ground side of the speaker terminals to go ahead and hook a ground wire to each of them and run them over to this area over here to ground these two speaker leads which you can see the wires right here the reason we do this is in case that these output transformers short out that they are connected to ground and then that will blow the fuse to keep the possibility of having these output transformers that are external getting hot and having B plus on them where they could electrocute somebody if they touched them. Well, that's it for this episode. I'm going to finish up hooking up these speaker jacks and installing these volume controls and the RCA jacks and await the arrival of an order of parts so I can continue wiring up the inside of the amplifier.